Delta Goodrum on the Flow Morning Show with Hearts on the Run. Earlier in the week, one of the topics on the Flow Man's radar was immigration. And in talking about that topic, he looked at some comments that were made in federal parliament, which he'll share in this segment. But he kicked things off taking a look back through Australian history. Those beautiful years after the wool off the sheep's back got Australia into a prosperity position and then through the 80s and 90s, Australia continued to be benefit from our agriculture and also our mining and our ability to produce our own gas and petroleum. Well, they were the golden years uh, and the honeymoon may well be over. Malcolm Roberts talks about why everyone wants to get to Australia, immigration, and but why we haven't got now with the numbers of people coming into Australia. We're talking here 600,000 each year, but at least 2 million that require housing right now. And that uh, as an issue that uh, has centrally not been looked at by the Albanese government. They continue to allow high immigration numbers without addressing the fact that there's nowhere for the people to live. Here's what Malcolm Roberts, uh, the federal senator, had to say in the federal parliament. I take note of the government's answers to my questions on the rate of immigration, visas and Australia's housing crisis. We know that the conversion of houses to Airbnbs takes away beds in which Australians could be living. The Albanese government saw over 5.86 million tourists arrive last financial year. That's creating a huge incentive for property owners to turn their houses into lucrative short-stay accommodation, making a housing and rental crisis worse. We only have 100,000 dedicated student accommodation beds, yet the Albanese government issued a record 687,000 student visas in one year. Analyst Tarek Brooker has used Department of Home Affairs data to show that there are 2.3 million visa holders likely to require housing in the country right now. This figure excludes tourists and other short-stay visas. In the past three years, almost every Australian in a rental has had their rent increase, often savagely. If they can find, if they can find a rental, almost three-quarters of young Australians believe they'll never be able to afford a home. If this rate of people coming into the country is maintained, sadly, they'll be correct. Australia's housing crisis is a direct result of the Albanese government's flood of permanent immigration, visa holders and tourists. There are two sides of the housing equation, supply and demand. With record overseas arrivals driving record levels of demand, we will never be able to build enough supply to keep up with demand. And on the supply side, barriers to building even more housing are growing. Rising interest rates are putting pressure on borrowing capacity to pay for new houses. Construction supply chains are still broken from federal and state COVID mismanagement, gross mismanagement. Rising material costs combined with existing, with existing fixed price contracts are squeezing builders and the construction industry is facing a wave of insolvencies. The unsustainable level of overseas arrivals in our country is fueling Australia's housing crisis. The rate of arrivals must be cut quickly. Well, surely a voice of reason. Malcolm Roberts from out of uh, Queensland, a senator in the federal parliament, He's right. I mean, he doesn't say anything there that you can dispute. If you're on the side of federal Labor, the problem that they have is is that they are looking for these refugees or for the additional people coming in via visa. They're looking for those numbers to continue to come in. And for whatever reason, they think that uh, endless population uh, growth is somehow going to produce uh, at some point in time an increase uh, in the uh, GDP or the output. But people have to have houses and they have to have jobs. They have to have income. A standard of living has to be maintained or the middle class um, dissipates and therefore the investment into small business from the middle class dissipates and that's what we're seeing right now. There's no point bringing in six or 700,000 new refugees every year if um, we don't actually have the infrastructure to cope. We've got people living in tents and I think Malcolm Roberts rightly points out the inadequacy of the planning by both this federal government but also the Morrison government through the COVID crisis. And you can't blame it all on COVID. They mismanaged that crisis and caused great consternation to the nation and great expenditure on a whole range of principles and a whole set of ideals that the government followed, including vaccination and the mandatory nature of that and the borders that they put restrictions on which have had an enormous impact on our economy. And following that, we've now got the visa crisis and a housing crisis to boot. Mr Roberts, I think, makes a fair assumption.